Hi, Hi folks. folks! Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist who escaped suburbia and now live in a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dogs, Jack Spaniels, and the newest member of our clan, Puppy Nori. This week we see a change in the seasons from cold and frosty winter to hopeful signs of sunnier weather to come. And as the weather improves, it's time to get ready for spring, starting with a boat trailer perilously close to completely falling apart. Watch as Richard and Willie attempt a daring plan to get the boat from the old trailer to the new before it gives way and crashes to the ground. Plus it's time for some much needed spring cleaning, but not where you would expect it. And I share the process of my latest painting, set to a backdrop of music Willie wrote and recorded for me. Join, Join us, us as we continue! continue. Live in the sky life. I am out on another food shopping trip with Mr. Jack Spaniels. He's come out with me today, not just to get a little break from Nori again, but also to have his booster injections at the vets. We've just been, and he was a very good boy, but Jack does not like the vets at all. He gets really nervous. We're not sure why. The vet is absolutely lovely, the guy that we see in Broadford. He was really nice, and he offered Jack biscuits and everything, but Jack just gets very nervous. But he was a very brave boy. He had his booster jabs, and we'll probably go out for a little walk. It's super cold today. It's pretty frosty, but it's fine out on the roads. I also have to go to the seamstress who is taking up my pajama bottoms. I got those pajamas for Christmas, and I haven't been able to wear them yet because A, we have a little biter at home called Nori, and B, they are far too long for me because because I have tiny, tiny legs. So I've been getting them taken up and it's a place called Busy V Sewing Service in Broadford. And it just so happens to be next to my retailer made on Sky. So I'll check in with them, go get my pajama bottoms and then maybe we'll go out for a nice cold, frosty walk. Hey Jack, do you wanna go walkies? is the Isle of Scalpe across the way there, which we've not yet explored. Surprise, surprise, Jack wants to go this way. <laughs> you found some ice! What do we think? Seal or otter? I think it's a seal. Come on then, pups. Time to go home. Let's go. Good boy. successful trip, picked up the shopping, got my pyjamas, 
which hopefully should be the right length now. And they only cost me nine pounds to get shortened, which is amazing. So that was really good. And Jack is walked. We think we saw an otter, might have been a seal. Too far away to tell, but it was a nice thing to see anyway. So yeah, that's all done. Let's head home to the other boys. Today I'm going down to a boatyard with Richard to look at a boat trailer. Now the reason for that is that the trailer that's with the boat, the one that I bought last year, it became apparent that I had been spray painted silver, obviously an effort to make it look better condition than it was, but as the year's gone on, and especially into the winter and after it's been in the salt water, it's revealed quite a lot of problems on it. Now, at the moment, we don't know whether or not we can fix them, but if not, we're going to have to buy a brand new trailer, which is a bit of a nightmare, really, but it is what it is. I'm going down with Richard today to look at some options and discuss some options with the people down at Adversar Boatyard and just see what they say. I'm going to stay here with the dogs. Probably don't want them running around the boatyard. No, that would be bad. Definitely don't want them running around the boatyard. So next time you see me, I'll be in the car with Richard and we'll be going down to the Slate Peninsula to look at some options today. I'll also be discussing with Richard on the way down if he thinks he can help me repair the trailer that we've got. But my gut feeling is that it's probably a bit too far gone. But then again, if Richard can weld it all up mm. and do a professional job on it, then that's different. If but... it can be fixed and made roadworthy, then that's fine. We like being able to fix stuff rather than buying new. But yeah. if it's a case of safety, yeah, that's then... where it's that's what the line is. And if we want to take it anywhere else, like launching it out here is fine because we don't have to go on the public roads. No. But to take it anywhere else, just for peace of mind, I don't think yeah. I would want to be taking that trailer out again. To be you, you don't want to be looking over your shoulder. I'm in the shed. I'm getting a trailer board and things like that just in case there is a bargain there that I can't turn down. I think it's probably just a recce today. I don't think I'm going to come back with anything. But if I don't have a trailer board, I'm certainly not coming back with anything. So I may as well take it and some ratchet straps and things as well we spread the cost a bit because we bought the boat last year and we're buying this one into this year so it is what it is we get so many comments by people saying that a boat was a hole in the water that you throw money into but also they're amazing when they're running smoothly and like the Land Rover I just want to get it running smoothly so let's see what we can do all right mate how are you getting on yeah, so, so 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 get in there enjoying this lovely weather lovely isn't it we picked the right day for it didn't we Better than sitting outside in the rain. That's true. Also, boats are wet anyway. <laughs> Let's go and look at some trailers then. Vasa and we've gone to the gate but it's locked so the chap's not here. Nobody him. I did email but um, he didn't reply so I took a chance and came down and yeah he's not here so I'll give him a bell and see if he's around and if not then we can just go and look at the ones that are in the yard I guess. Nice. <laughs> yeah it looks very locked up but we can at least look at some trailers. I hope uh, yeah I don't think there's any trailers here Richard's saying. Can't see any. There was one back there on the top of like I don't know a container or something. Okay, so the chap that owns the boatyard is down at Dorney on his way back from Inverness. The weather's so bad today, he shut the boatyard up and did something else, so he went away off site. I phoned the number that was in the email and he'll be here in less than an hour. As it happens, Richard, of course, knows someone that lives just up the road. So we've gone up to their house and we're having a cup of tea and we're going to go back down there once we've had a cup of tea and see this trailer and see if it's going to be suitable. And if it is, then chances are, having to come all the way down here again, I may as well just buy it today. I've spoken to Sarah. Sarah's totally up for it. We want to be able to drive the boat around. I knew I was going to end up spending more money on the boat. That's what boats do. So yeah, I guess brand new is the best way to do it. It's not a ridiculous amount of money. It's more money than I want to spend, but who likes spending money? But for peace of mind, this is probably the best thing to do. Let's see how it goes. So the guy had to come and help us because they were on the top of the containers there and uh, he's actually pulled them all down. We've looked at two different kinds and there was a bunk trailer which is just sort of, it's got little bars on it as opposed to rollers and then this one which is pretty much the same as the one that I've got but it isn't broken and uh, I bought it. Richard took it up to the back of the Land Rover and I'm going to go back to the office now and pay the man some money and uh, yeah, I'm looking at my new trailer. Thanks Richard. 
<laughs> That's it, all hooked up. Richard helped me out. Let's get back to the cottage. Yes. I've put the trailer over at Richard's house because there's no room on our drive for it. So tomorrow Richard's got a plan to get the boat from the trailer it's on onto the new trailer. And I don't actually know what that plan is. So stay tuned to find out. <laughs> Normally when I do paintings, I choose something seasonal, which I've seen and been inspired by on one of our many adventures. However, this is a little different, as I agreed to do a commission for a friend. They wanted a poppy painting because they used to be in the armed forces. The red poppy is symbolic of remembrance because it often grows on battlefields. As a general rule, I don't usually accept commissions. I don't have the time to commit to them that I would like, and it's also a lot of pressure, especially when the subject is often something with great emotional attachment to the person requesting it. However, I wanted to do this for my friend, and they have very kindly allowed me to show the process on the channel and sell prints of the finished piece on my Etsy store. For some reason, I always find red subjects really difficult to paint. There is such a difference between warm and cool toned reds that it's hard to find the right balance between them. I love adding in the shading and starting to see a 3D image come to life on the paper. I will add to this with extra layers of shading throughout the painting. Poppy petals are so thin and crinkly, so I had to add lots of tiny lines to give it the right texture. It is one of those rare, calm and dry days here on the Isle of Skye in the winter and usually we'd be getting out and going on some kind of adventure. Today we're doing something slightly more mundane because I've got some work to do on the car. Normally it would be Willie working on the Land Rover Defender but today I'm working on my car. I'm not doing anything mechanical and this feature especially is for people who are a bit ashamed that the car isn't as pristine as it should be because my car has mould. Yes, Nori. It's not good in certain weather conditions such as snow and ice and high winds. So we tend to use Willie's car predominantly in the winter time. The last time I used it was probably before Christmas. We had some mild wet weather. Obviously the inside has got wet and it never really dried out because now there's mold all over the seats. And I've been looking at it for ages going, I need to sort that out. So today's the day because hopefully I can get it cleaned in the morning. And because it's not gonna rain, 
I can air it out a bit so it dries properly. Let's go and have a look and I'll need to get some supplies out of the cottage to do some cleaning. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. I think I must have put shopping on that seat which had wet bags and yeah, that's the result. Lovely patches of mold all over my car. We do have valet services on Sky. There's one in Portree, I think, which is the closest. To be honest, I'd be very embarrassed to take the car in in this condition. And also I feel like I'd have to drive the whole way with my head out the window because I don't want to breathe it in. So let's just get this sorted here. To work scrubbing the interior of the car with washing up liquid and hot water. A not so pleasant task made more interesting by the presence of two spaniels intent on finding out what you're doing and if they can eat or play with it. Tell me you've got dogs without telling me you've got dogs. Oh, time to get some fresh water. Okay, so I've cleaned every surface I could get my hands on. So now I'm gonna go back over with some clean water and try and rinse it out. We've also got this spray foam stuff that we use for cleaning upholstery from Dog Mess, um, which fortunately hasn't been needed that much, but I figured that would be good for getting into the upholstery of the seats and you spray it on, scrub it in, leave it, and then you hoover it out a couple of hours later. So hopefully that's gonna have worked. Okay, we're getting there. All I've got to do now is hoover the internal mats and give them a clean and then hoover the interior and we're pretty much done. But I need to leave all the doors open and air it out because it's obviously really damp now. So that means I need to distract the dogs from going in there and undoing all the good work. <laughs> and then you've got the laundry to do. Uh, how about no? <laughs> Time to give Hetty some work. Hey pups, you know, like the hoover. That's where they are. Been looking for those cases for ages. <sighs> now that the mold was cleaned away, I could get on with finishing a general and much needed clean of Ziggy. The back of my car is always particularly bad because that's obviously where the dog and now dogs will go. Yeah, this was long overdue, wasn't it? Anyone else have a, a nice slobbery patch where their dog likes to put their mouth when they're excited about the destination? Just me? detritus from the car goes it's actually not too bad although there was a lot of rubbish <laughs> honestly it's nowhere near as bad as the amount of stuff that came out of Willie's old car when we cleaned it out oh my gosh there was so much stuff <laughs> so much junk and so much weird stuff that you'd only really get in a metal detectorist treasure hunter kind of car genuinely it feels like i'm having a spring clean of my car it feels really good it's really mild today and really nice so it's kind of hopeful that spring is in the air i know it'll change back again but it feels a little bit like the warmer calmer days are on their way hey pups spring's on its way
Well, that took longer than I thought it was going to. It's been a couple of hours now, so it's almost lunchtime, but it's done. Well done. It's finally clean. Um, the sun has kind of disappeared, which I was hoping it would stay out and help dry it. I think I might have to put a heater in there, huh? Yeah, I would uh, put a heater on the back seat or something, just a low heat. Open, Open the, the windows windows a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Dry it out. Yep. So we've got to do that just to make sure it dries, because otherwise I'm going to have the same problem again. I feel quite ashamed I let it get to that state. Like, I'm not the most car proud of people, but having two dogs now, outdoor lives. It's all right for a landy. That's supposed to be dirty. I've been doing really well on this, it's nice and clean. On the outside? I've done a lot to this recently, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Ziggy has been neglected though, so hopefully that's my car ready for spring and summer when I can actually use it again. Nori just about jumped in. Oh my God, he's been trying to get in that car all day. Nori's in the car. Nori, Nori, don't you dare. You need a spring clean. Spring or clean? <laughs> Okay, it's the next day and I'm about to go and get Richard and the Land Rover to come over here and help me move the boat trailer, which is really bad. I've been under it today having a look at it again. It's just too far gone. So we're going to take it over to his place and then we're going to try and get the boat onto the new trailer. And then Richard is going to recycle the parts that you can recycle from the original trailer for Carbos Waterfront, which is really good. So first of all, I've got to go and get Richard. Let's go and do that. Richard's just hooking up. I'm not the best driver when it comes to trailers. Hello, how are you doing? Bleep. Oh, bleep, did you cut yourself? Oops. You all right? Hi. You want plaster? No. Step one, are you excited? No. Neither am I. <laughs> Terrified is more. Thing out of here now. Look at that, I even remember to put my bit of wood through there so it doesn't fall down. Skills. Mm. Remember something, in it? Well, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Richard is our neighbour, so we didn't have very far to go, which is just as well, as one of the trailer tyres exploded just as we pulled up onto his croft. Adventures of <laughs> Willie and his boat. <laughs> <laughs> Misadventures, mate. <laughs> so Richard's frankly rather ingenious plan went like this. Cut the front of the old trailer with an angle grinder and some brute force, before using the new trailer's winch to pull the boat off the old trailer and onto the new one. Of course there was a bit more to it than that, but it all went to plan. So now we've hooked up the Land Rover and uh, it's all looking good so far. So now Richard's just tuning all the different rollers so that it fits perfectly and there's not too much pressure on the front ones or the back ones, which you have to do when you get a new trailer for a boat. You can see just how rotten this actually was now, now that we've taken it apart. It's really quite scary actually. And of course, uh, just been freshly painted for the sale, so I couldn't see it. Look at this. That happened when we were moving the boat. Look at that. I could actually push my thumb through there. Well done, man. Amazing job. There she is. Looks so much better. And I feel so much happier about driving it as well. Because that last one. The wind made the audio unusable here, but what I was saying is that I wouldn't even have driven the old trailer onto the beach to launch it. Before cutting it up, there was no way of knowing just how unsafe it was. Right, just testing it out. Richard's driving just now. We're just going to put the uh, trailer board on now before we take it out onto the road. This is not a road. <laughs> I took this opportunity to test out the side steps that I repaired a few months ago, happy to report that they passed the test. Accomplished. The 
was demonstrated than it would be in real life, but this was a request from the person who commissioned the painting. I wasn't sure about it at first, but I quite like the stylized look it gives the piece. the layers of colour gradually so I can leave some parts very light and make the shadow parts darker each time. Sometimes my painting technique can be very repetitive but I enjoy just losing myself in the process and not thinking of anything else while I'm doing it. I was desperate to start adding in the black stamens of the poppy flower by this point, as I knew it wouldn't look right until I did. When using a dark colour like black, you need to wait right until the end and make sure the painting is completely dry, or it will bleed into the other colours. As you may have noticed in this section, I managed to leave a dark mark of paint on the paper, which didn't come away with just water. A trick I learned from another artist on Instagram was to use a sharp razor blade to gently scrape away the top layer of paper with the stain. It's nerve wracking and definitely not a technique to try just after you've had a strong coffee, but if you take your time with it, you can completely remove the stain. I'm often asked how long it takes me to complete my paintings. This one took about 17 hours to finish, spread over many days to allow the layers to dry in between. Prints of this and all my other paintings are available on my Etsy store now. As a nod to the inspiration behind it, we will be donating a percentage of the sales to a charity of my friends choosing, raising money to help veterans who have lost limbs in service. As always folks, thank you so much for watching our video, we really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please do leave us a like, a comment or subscribe to our channel if you don't already, it's free to do and it really helps us out. And if you do, you're cool, officially, I don't know why officially, but you're cool. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to support the channel further, you can do so over on Ko-fi. You can buy us a coffee or you can buy the boys a wee treat. And like I have said before, what I really mean is help support the running costs of the channel. If you want to help us out more long term, you can join our amazing community over on Patreon, where you get lots of bonus content and some exclusive first looks at things for helping us out each month. If you enjoy watching Sailor's Painting, you can buy prints that over on our Etsy store. And remember, 20% of the sales will be going to a charity that supports veterans who have lost limbs, which is a really important cause to our friend who commissioned it. The links to that page and all of our other pages are in the video description. Below! Below! <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and we will see you... <laughs> next week! <laughs> We're doing it, it's going in. <laughs> We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. Please do leave us a like, a comment, or 
can't remember what I was going to say. Was it? I know. I know. <laughs> Subscribe. Oh God. I only do this every week. Oh, he's whittling. Normally it would be. Normally it would be. Normally it would be Willie. Right. Can we chill out, please? It's still the <laughs> no. Chaos. I knew he was going to whittle. Don't lick the bubbles. What? No. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Bloopers. <laughs> nice. Next week. Oh. Oh. So we've come down to Ardvasa. How do you say it? Ardvasa. 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 See, I've been saying it wrong. It's actually Ardvasa. Nori, no. I've just cleaned that. I've just cleaned that. Get out. Thank you. Wait, see. Right, you go in there. Don't we? You go in there. We Good fight. boy. Right. <sighs> Every time. And now Nori's off. Just to film a very short piece. <laughs> oh, hello, Nori. Well, look. Lucky Penny. See you, Penny. Pick it up. All day long, you'll have good luck. Yeah? If you give it to a friend, then your luck will never end. Is that what you are? Just a friend? Click here to subscribe to live in the sky life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.